Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we're creating a watercolor lemon entirely in Procreate. So what you see on screen is exactly what we're going to be creating together. The color palette is free as always. Just tap on the link in the video description. You can download and install it. We are using my paid set of watercolor illustration brushes for this, but if you wanna change up the style, feel free to use any brushes that you'd like. Just a heads up, this is one of my more advanced tutorials, so the pace is going to be much quicker than usual. So if you haven't checked out my free Procreate for Beginners course yet, or checked out some of my previous tutorials, I would recommend doing that first if at any point in time the pace feels too fast. Okay, all that said, I'm going to create a brand new document that's 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels at 300 dpi, and then we'll get started. Okay, I've got my document all ready to go, and the first thing we're going to do is go grab a source image that we can work from. So I'm going to jump over into Safari and open up Unsplash in my browser. If you've been following along with my past tutorials, tutorials, you have seen me do this before. I came to unsplash.com up in the search bar. I searched for lemon. So I scrolled down a ways. I will leave a link to this image in the video description. That way it's a little easier to find. But you tap on the image, you hit the download, you hit download, and then up here, you tap on the little arrow pointing down, tap on the lemon image, it'll open up in its own window. Then you can hit the export up here and then just hit save image down here and that will save it to your camera roll. So I'm going to jump back into Procreate and we'll bring that image in. Okay, I'm back in Procreate. All I have to do is hit my wrench, hit add, and then hit insert a photo and go grab that image. And the size that it's brought in at is actually a great size to work with. So I'm just gonna move it up on my canvas a little bit and then we're good to go. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is create an outline of our lemon before we actually drop the texture into it since it's a larger shape. So I'm going to grab my yellow color. I'm going to grab my free mono weight brush first. I'll leave a link in the video description to that as well. And I'm going to create a brand new layer. And in order, you could just trace the lemon if you want, but to make it a little easier, I usually draw an oval that goes left and right and that'll give me some smooth sides and it just looks a little more visually appealing that way. And then I'll draw in the rest of my lemon. Anywhere where you don't see it, just make up what's going on back there. And this seems kind of weird right here, this little divot, so I'm just gonna make this seem a little more normal. And then fill that with color. I can turn off my reference image, that way I can make sure I fill in any gaps that might happen when I fill in the color. So now that we have the shape, I can fill it in with texture really easily by creating a selection of it. So just tap on the layer thumbnail, hit select, create a brand new layer right above it, turn off the image that we just made. The only reason we did this was so we could get a fully opaque selection. If we did this with watercolor, we would have areas that were missing because of the texture and we needed a full flat color in order to do this. So I don't need this image on in order to maintain its selection. So I can just uncheck that and you can see this is still selected. And now on my brand new layer, I can go and grab my watercolor illustration brush. I'm going to use the heavy paint round brush here and you can make this max size and then I can just paint it right in and then I've got my texture immediately. So because this is a lemon and we're going to make this kind of realistic with a bunch of highlights and shadows, I want this to be a little more opaque than I usually would. So I'm going to deselect it first. I'm going to duplicate my texture just to make it a little denser and this will help me a lot to really make those highlights and shadows pop and make it look dimensional. So I'm going to merge these two together, label this one lemon, and now that's all set. All right, so I can turn on my reference photo again. I'm going to reduce the opacity of it. That way I can see what I'm doing on top of it a little easier. I can temporarily turn off my lemon layer, and now we're going to focus on the stem and the leaf. So I'm going to create a brand new layer. I'm going to grab my green color up at the very top and return to my heavy paint round brush. I'm going to reduce the size down to about 8%. And we're just going to paint in just the stem here. Because this is a smaller element, I'm okay with painting this one without that little handy trick that we just did. And I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did before with duplicating it. So duplicate the layer, pinch these two together so it's just a little bit denser. Label this one stem. Now for this leaf, we're going to actually do the exact same trick that we did before with a flat shape and then implementing the texture. So I'm going to create a brand new layer right above it. I'm going to return back to my mono weight brush, trace the leaf and fill it in with color. And 
And now we've got this one on its own layer and it's flat. So we're going to make a selection of it. So tap on the layer thumbnail, hit select. Now we can turn it off, create a brand new layer. We're going to grab our watercolor illustration, heavy paint round brush, and we can increase the size again and just paint that texture right in there. And we can duplicate that again. I can deselect, duplicate this, pinch them together and label this one leaf. Okay, so that's really coming along now. And you probably noticed on the reference image, if I turn off the leaf and the lemon, we've got a little bit of detail coming through the leaf and it connects the leaf to the stem. So I'm going to put that in right now. So I'm going to create a brand new layer. I'm going to select my dark green color down here. And from the set, I'm going to grab my round liner brush. And this is really good for details, this brush. So I'm just going to draw it up and connect it up to my stem. I can duplicate this and pinch it again because everything needs to be a little bit denser here for our, when we bring in our highlights and shadows. I'm just gonna label this one detail. So let's turn everything on that we wanna keep. We don't wanna turn our flat leaf on or our flat lemon. Let me label this flat lemon. I'll turn off my reference image and you could be done right now if you wanted to be done, but now we're going to implement all those details. So things are going to get really complex now because we're going to add in all of our highlights and shadows and that's where it's really going to start popping off the screen. So the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate my reference image. I'm going to reduce the size of it and keep a copy of it because we're going to freehand all of our highlights and shadows and it's gonna be really fun. So I'm going to increase the opacity all the way up so we can get a really good idea where things are on this. So we're going to start with our shadows and then we'll build in our highlights. So our darkest areas of our reference image are the left side of the lemon. It's pretty strong right here. We've got a strong shadow coming off of the leaf, but look at the shape of it. It doesn't follow the leaf all the way down. It stops right here. So keep that in mind because it makes it feel really unique that way. And then we also have a shadow right up here. Uh, you could put the little hairline shadow down here if you wanted to, but that's basically it. So that's where we're going to focus our time and our efforts right now. So in order to do that, we need to come to our lemon, our lemon layer. So I'm going to create a brand new layer. I'm going to grab my darkest color down here. We're going to be using our washes for this. So I'm going to start with my dense wash right here. And let's see what size this is. This seems a little small. We're gonna come up to 6% with our dense wash brush. Yeah, that's looking good. All right, so because we're using wash brushes, they are going to appear a little more muted or toned back than some of our other brushes. So we're going to change the blend mode of our layer to multiply. So this will just automatically make it look a little darker. So I'm constantly referring to this and where I'm going to be painting. So this area in the center is the darkest. So I'm going to go over that multiple times and then slowly come up here. And it's okay that I am outside the lines right now. It's totally fine. So this is what I've got for my shadow on the side of the lemon. So we need to lock it into the lemon shape and in order to do that, we just come to our layers, tap on the layer thumbnail and hit clipping mask and that will mask it right in there. You can see it's really hard though, so I'm going to smudge it just a little bit more to soften it up. So this time I'm going to grab my soft wash brush and this will definitely soften it. I'm at 8% here and if I stipple with it, it gives me a more natural softening. The next shadow we're going to work on is the one right underneath the leaf. So we're going to create a brand new layer. And if you didn't already know this, you will right now, you can stack clipping masks. It's a super powerful tool. It's an incredible alternative to alpha lock. If you're currently using alpha lock, please stop using alpha lock. Please don't ever use it again. It's so bad. It's such a bad practice. And that's where stackable clipping masks come in because now we can keep everything on separate layers. So if you ever want to change something, you just go to the layer and you change it. If you're on alpha lock, you're putting everything on the same layer. You can't separate things later on if you want to make a change to one part of it. So it's just, it's not a smart way to work. So please stop using alpha lock. So all I have to do is tap on the layer thumbnail, hit clipping mask, and this will also mask it into the shape. So if I start painting, you can see I'm still locked into my lemon, but I'm on a brand new layer. So super cool. 
All right, we're doing the same exact thing. I still have my brown color selected and I've got my dense wash, but I'm going to reduce the size just a little bit because our shadow is much smaller for this one. So I'm at 5% and this is the shadow that we're replicating right here. You can see it changes opacity a little bit. So it gets much lighter over here, but it's much denser right here. So that's what we're looking at. And you can see it's even along the edge of the leaf right here up until it comes to about this point. So I'm just gonna follow that along, just paint softly. You could even use your, let's see, if I grab my medium paint round brush, I could even use that since it's a little bit harder here and then I can smudge it out and that might be better for the edge of the leaf. So let me grab my dense wash brush and just put a little bit more texture along the edge. So now I'm going to grab my, oh, let's change the blend mode to multiply and that'll darken it up too. All right, now I can grab my dense wash brush as a smudge brush and push things around to soften it up, especially that edge. I'm gonna reduce the size of it so it's not so extreme. So that is looking good. Now we're going to move up here, right where the stem hits the lemon. You can see how dark it is right along. It's a hard line too. So I'm, I already know I'm going to use my heavy paint round brush. So create a brand new layer. We're going to apply clipping mass where we've got that stackable clipping mask going, change the blend mode to multiply. And I'm going to grab my heavy paint round brush and just duplicate that hard edge that's just coming right up. And I can soften it just slightly, like hardly at all. So all of that's looking good. I'm going to add a little bit of darkness down here to the very bottom too. So I'm still using my heavy paint round brush for this. You can see on the reference image how dark it is. So I'm just going to add that. Time to add in some highlights. So if we look at our reference image, we can see that things are basically the middle tone right here, and then they get really light, and then we've got even some white areas here where the highlight's the most intense. So that's what we're going to mimic. We're going to add in a layer of highlight here and then a really bright layer of highlight right there. And then the lemon part will be all done. And then we can just focus on the stem and the leaf put in some final shadow details to make it pop off the background and then it'll be all set. So these are all of our shadows. We're going to create a brand new layer and even though these ones are our shadows, we can continue stacking our clipping mask. So I'm going to tap on the layer thumbnail, hit clipping mask, and we're going to come to our light yellow color, which is right in the middle right here. I'm going to come back to my dense wash and this time this layer's blend mode is going to be overlay just to make it even brighter. And we can just paint this in the same way that we saw it on the reference image. I'm going to smudge out the color so the edges are a little softer. Let me make the size of this a little bigger. You probably noticed when I painted over the shadow right here under the leaf, it changed to a red and obviously we don't want that because that doesn't look good at all. Um, all we have to do to fix that is slide our highlight layer underneath our shadow layer. So just tap on it and drag and it will still maintain the clipping mask as long as you don't drag it beneath the lemon. So it's sandwiched between the lemon and our shadows. So we're still all set and you can see it went right back to the color that it needs to be. All right, so for the last little glistening highlight right there, we're going to actually go to white so double tap where the white is and that'll give you true white. You're going to create a brand new layer and when you do, since it's sandwiched between a clipping mask and a clipping mask, it automatically takes on a clipping mask, so that's perfect. And then just hit the little N, change it to overlay, and now we're just going to paint in a very small patch of really bright yellow right here. So this is our highlight and then we can just smudge it out. And if you turn it on and off, you can see what that looks like, the difference it makes. So it's a pretty big difference. So our lemon's looking really good. And the next thing we're going to do is move on to our leaf. So let's group all of our lemon layers together. So we'll hit group, label this one lemon. And now we can move on to our stem. So we're just going to follow the exact same thing that we previously did. So create a brand new layer. I'm going to use my dense wash brush again. 
and we're just going to refer to our reference. So you can see we've got some highlight areas. It's totally up to you how detailed you wanna get with this because there's quite a bit going on. So I just kind of block off. If you blur your eyes a little bit, you can see where the brightest parts and the darkest parts are. So that's kind of what I stick to. So I'm going to grab my lightest green color first. We'll create a clipping mask. So tap on the layer thumbnail, hit clipping mask. I've got my dense wash and it's going to be pretty small. This one's gonna be at 2%. So I'm just gonna come back over, looking at my reference, so I've got like highlight area right here, right here, and right here. And then if you want any areas that are a little more defined, just switch to your heavy paint round brush and you can draw those in as well. Okay, create a brand new layer, apply a clipping mask. This one's going to be the darkest green color. I'm going to grab my dense wash again and just look at where my darkest areas are. Okay, so now our stem is all done. So let's group those layers together and label it stem. And now we're onto our last element, which is our leaf. So if I come over to my leaf layer, I can actually use my flat leaf as a selection, which will really come in handy to make everything move a lot quicker with our shading. So if I tap on the layer thumbnail and hit select, I can make a selection of it without it being visible, which is pretty ideal right now. So we're just going to come over to our leaf layer, create a brand new layer above it, create a clipping mask, and now we're going to paint with our dense wash as the lightest green right here. We're going to put in our highlight first. So I've got my dense wash brush selected. So you can see that there's a highlight right along this line. It's basically that whole half of the leaf. So that's what I'm looking at. So if I come over here and I can paint with my dense wash, let me undo that, make it a little bigger. I'm up to 8%, so I want this to be pretty noticeable on here. So let's deselect and see what we're working with. So a really easy way to preview it is just turn it on and off and you can see right away that we do have a nice highlight there. I think I want mine a little more intense, so I'm going to duplicate this and then reduce the opacity down to like 60% and then I'll merge these two together. So it's like a one and a half times. And now if I turn this on and off, that's looking really good. I'm going to smudge it a little bit. So now we're gonna move on to our shadow. So I'm going to create a brand new layer. Tap on the layer thumbnail, hit clipping mask. I'm going to come to my darkest color. I'm going to return to my flat leaf and get a selection going of this. So tap on the layer thumbnail, hit select. Come back to your layer 19 it is right here, the one that I just created, it's brand new. We've got the dense wash brush still selected and I can paint this in right here. The reason why I am not creating a selection off of my watercolor is it will exclude these areas where it's not totally opaque and it'll be far more difficult to get this really rich, dark and really bright lights. So that's why I create that flat layer. Then I can get the full selection that I want in it. Okay, now that we have the highlight and the shadow on our leaf, we can group those together. I'm gonna to group the detail layer along with it and just label this one leaf. So now all we have left to do is to put in our background. So I'm going to make my background color. I'm going to tap on background color and choose this light blue color that I have right here. And now I'm going to add in a shadow and you can see with our reference image, we've got this really hard shadow right along the same edge as the really strong shadow on the lemon itself. So we're going to mimic that right over here with some watercolor. So I'm going to create a brand new layer right above my flat lemon layer since I don't need that one anymore. So I'm going to grab my darkest blue, which is right underneath the light blue. It's kind of hard to see it, but it's definitely there. I'm going to grab my dense wash as well as my soft wash. So I'm going to kind of go back and forth between them until I get the look that I want. So I'm going to make these fairly large. I'm gonna start at a 10% brush size, but I might increase it a little bit after that. So I'm just going to start painting right along the edge. Yeah, I need to make this a little bigger. So I'm just keeping it strictly to where this shadow on the side of the lemon is. Let me add a little bit of soft wash. That is really, really harsh, so we're gonna smudge it just a little bit with our dense wash brush. I'm gonna make this pretty large, 12%, and just tone it back a little bit, but I'm going to stipple. And 
And if that's too strong, I'm actually going to change the blend mode to multiply and reduce the opacity just a little bit. I'm going to go to like 80% because I actually like it being that strong of a shadow. All right, I can turn off my reference image now. I don't need that anymore. And that's looking good. If you want to finish everything off, I like adding a watercolor paper texture to the top of it and it'll just make it look more like watercolor. So come to the very top, create a brand new layer, change your color to black. So double tap where the black is and then come to the bottom of the set. I like the medium tooth paper texture for this. Make it all the way to the max size, zoom out a little bit and then just brush right across your full canvas and that will add that paper texture. And if I zoom in here, you can see how nice that looks. Really pretty. And if I change the blend mode to multiply, it just makes the colors interact with it a little bit better. Okay, so that's how to create a watercolor lemon entirely in Procreate. Once again, links to everything mentioned in this tutorial, including the reference image, the watercolor illustration brush set, as well as the free mono weight brush and free color palette are all in the video description. So just tap in there and you can have access to everything. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of new tutorials just like this one in the future. For more Procreate tutorials and freebies, head on over to my site, every hyphen tuesday.com. You can also find me over on Instagram. My handle is every Tuesday. If you try this out and post it there, I would love it if you tag me. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.